One of the areas that we get asked a lot about is mission critical IoT. I think one of the, one of the things about it is it's kind of the, the big sexy when we start talking about IoT. It's robots that are moving through factories. It's uh, you know remote operating tables. And you know if you walk around trade show floors, you would think that this is happening today. That why why can't I hail a an Uber that will do surgery on me? This should be today. In reality, there's some things that have to happen with 5G for that to become mainstream. And so when we start talking about the cool technologies, it's really important to remember the time frame. And there's two key technologies that we want to talk about. Ultra-reliable, low-latency connectivity, URLLC, and you know that just gets you data very fast. So today, we can get data in the 10 millisecond range, 100 millisecond range, and a couple of of megabit per second, but that's not enough to control a five-ton robot that's moving around people or a car that's like that. When we start getting into 5G, we can get these kind of technologies where we can get massive data transmitting with really, really low latency. The other thing is network slicing. So we can take the really, really important data and we can make it more higher priority or put it on a different network so it's more secure. The reality of 5G is those two things are going to take a while to deploy, and not not really in the five to four, zero to five year radar. They're more in the five to ten year radar. So that's just something to realize. It's kind of the wave two 5G that people talk about, and that's really where we're going to start to see these use cases to, to become more mainstream. Seems like a long time, ten to thirteen years for this to become cool, but. As I like to tell people, we've had Dancing with the Stars for 13 years. If we've lived through that, we can get there.